everyone and welcome back to KIF. I'm joined today by Tida Natalie who's come to talk to me for my series about filmmaking around the globe. Welcome to the studio. Hi Jo, thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, where should we start? Let's chat about your film. So you've put a film into competition at yes, KIF. I have, you? Yeah. I don't know that I'm allowed to talk to you that much about that, but tell us a little bit about it. Just give us the teaser. So the film's called Bright Like the Sun, and it follows a little five-year-old boy around in his little daily chores in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a little kind of sci-fi twist at the end, so. Oh, yeah. lovely. And so that's the film you've entered into competition at yeah. KIF. Check out plasmproductions.com uh, and on there you'll find a whole series of films um, that Tida made all over the globe. Actually, mm -hmm. I was expecting to find that perhaps you had some affiliation to Myanmar that, you know, from your film that you put in, but actually you've made films in Delhi, in Spain. Tell us about your vision for, for your movie making. I like hidden stories and I love meeting people. And when I would travel, I would meet these incredible people with incredible stories that you would never, you know, see publicised or understand about. And uh, I just felt the need to capture them and to pretty much learn how to video from that point on. I mean, um, yeah, a bit travelling around the world, you, you just meet so many different types of people and it pretty much forced me to pick up a camera and learn how to film. So. so you didn't have a training and a background in filmmaking? No, not at all. I was a backpacker. You were a backpacker and perhaps, did, had you done a degree and were sort of thinking about what your next steps were or? <laughs> no, no, I hadn't done any of that. I just, um, I, went, I went to some really cool places and some friends kind of suggested I get a Panasonic um, the little G, not the G80, I even had the G7 or GX, GX7 tiny back in, tiny, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and uh, just press the red button to record, you know, because the places you go and the people you meet are interesting, yeah. uh, and that just got me, you know, I was forced to learn pretty much. So you learn as you went, yes. finding stories and finding ways to tell them. Yes. I have to tell you, watching your films, I was incredibly moved by them. Thank but you. also what I really noticed um, was a very immersive landscape of filmmaking that you create. You invite us in in so many ways. The, the, the films have a very sort of painterly quality. You really focus on nature and, and very strong imagery. But also your soundscapes are really intense. And so, so you have this sort of poetic quality to your filmmaking mm. that I found extraordinary. And, you did say to me that one of your influences is uh, Werner Herzog, so tell mm. me a little bit about, about that. I pretty much had done a bunch of pro bono social films, but so more commercial stuff, but never like a kind of, what do we call them, talking head or yeah. human story? Yeah, is it human like a human stories. story? Yes, yeah, so um, I was really into human story stuff, um, and um, I was stuck on this film. I'd found a guy in um, Sardinia, and it was um, this guy talked about giants, and uh, that his family was part of a line of giants and that he'd been hidden. I didn't know how to cut this story and uh, watched, uh, watched the masterclass. And Werner does like these like beautiful visual long shots, drones with cinematic mm. kind of music. And that mm. just made me understand exactly how to do this, this one. And that's mm. um, with the Nuragi drone shots that just pulled mm. that apart and yeah. People everywhere have got wisdom to share. Mm -hmm. And I found that you, these massive stories in a tiny universe mm. is what you've achieved with your filmmaking. And I, I mean, I can't wait to, to hear about what you're going to do next. What's, what's next for you, Tida? Um, I have, so alongside my f starting these films, I met a subject. I mean, I don't want to like talk too much about this subject and how, this, but it's massively influential. So in 2015, I was a backpacker and me and my just opened up the country. Well, it opened up about a few years ago, but yeah, we could get across a certain border at that point. So I went to Burma for the first time and I stayed in this interesting kind of social experiment, monastery stroke, oh, how can we call it? Like not the NHS of Myanmar, but um, incredible social, free everything, health care, meditation, food, medicines. Yeah. Um, and I met the main abbot who was running it. And yeah, it was a few minutes of just sitting in front of him. And um, I don't know if these people have these strong energy signatures, but I knew that this character was an amazing man. 
Um, I'd never, I don't think I'd made a film then. That mm -hmm. was, I had a camera and I was photographing. Anyway, I went traveling and I kept dreaming about filming this man. And uh, two years later, I just asked a nun, I need to film Sayadaw, which means an abbot in Burmese. And um, he granted me the interview, which kind of made me feel complete with that. Mm -hmm. And then I carried on filming him and I've been filming him for five years, on and off. Wow. And uh, so what's next for me, it's like a, interesting because I have to, f I will finish this feature documentary of this man. Also in my storytelling and in my filming, what's happened is that I've progressed to wanting to do social, I really want to help local communities. Mm -hmm. And so I turned Bright Like the Sun into the first project where films give back. So it's a film that gives back. So I raise money on that film. Okay. And uh, basically I then support a local children's charity in that country. And I'll be doing that incredible. in every country. Gosh, that's incredible. Thanks. With everybody's help. We'll, yes. we'll all come and help. Thank you, all invited. Well, we'd love to, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, it's what an amazing project. On that note, actually, let's just talk about how you see yourself fitting into what we call the sort of mainstream industry. I came from outside anyway, so I wouldn't say it's not a corruption, but I wouldn't say I was influenced by being in that thought process of, you know, going to film school and being given those, you know, understandings about how, what, what foot in front of the other needs to happen for you to make a film. Mm. So I've, I've come in kind of blind and in a way it's maybe difficult. Mm. Um, but it's a message for everybody because um, if you do what you love yeah. and then you love what you do, that will hone you towards yeah. the goal. So, you know, that's kept me kind of finding my way through mm -hmm. this process mm -hmm. and, you know, also quite clear that I won't do commercial uh, and things like that because it's just not aligned with what's, in my opinion, good for the planet mm. anyway. So, um, I have to ask, do you, do you, make your films with other people or is it are you very I, much a one woman band i love to work with other people a lot of people post-production yeah uh, bright light sun has a massive post-production group yes. um on i would love my next step would be to have videographer with me mm -hmm. um to travel it's just yeah. that it's so demanding sometimes and it's very time sensitive and it's also there was one seat in the car in the last one and i was honored to be invited so i have to kind of do what kevin does and do kind of like one man and you're forced to learn because you just want the story so i would love to but you know sometimes it brings a lot of attention to you like having yes. a big crew and also people are different Yes. when you've got like all of that you yeah. want you want their heart and you want them to connect you like you know family and i also yeah. kind of connect to them for periods of time so it would be not so easy with a large crew yeah the intimacy mm -hmm. that really comes through in your stories it's as if your subjects completely trust you <clears throat> they 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 talk very naturally with you about their hopes and fears and dreams and their big big thoughts that they feel really free to express if you have a massive camera crew, that can change the dynamic, can't yeah. it? I'm scared of that. I, I'm not against it, um, but it would be new for me, and I'd have mm. to work manage some, it. Yeah, manage it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really honoured that you could come today. Thank you I so think much. It's going to be a jo. great addition to Kif. We're building a really important community of filmmakers, and I'm thrilled that you're going to be part of it. It's an honour for you to exciting. have me. And come back soon for our next edition of filmmaking around the globe. We'll see you soon.